So just imagine you're on Tinder, a single young male or female, just swiping, swiping right, swiping left. You swipe and you match with somebody that you're very attracted to. You guys start texting, you guys start talking, the chemistry is flowing, you're into this person. You decide to meet up with this person and go out on a date. You go out on your first date, it's great. So much chemistry, just the vibe is amazing. You go home that night, you're feeling so wonderful, you decide to make a second date. You go on that second date, but you never return home. It happens all the time. We're gonna be talking about a story today, Sydney Loof, who disappeared in 2017 from matching with somebody that she was very much attracted to on Tinder. Before we get into it though, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody, everywhere, in your everyday life, in the grocery store, in your home, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So I was gonna do a story time video for you guys today because it's been a little bit, but then I was thinking in celebration of Valentine's Day, let's talk about some dating website stories. One of my really good friends sent me this story about Cindy Loof and I went down the rabbit hole with this one. This case is so all over the place and so bizarre and really could just happen to anybody. I know it is 2020 now, and a lot of people are meeting online and connecting online. I mean, if you guys know anything about my story, even me and my husband reconnected on MySpace over 10 years ago. Like, it is the way of the future. The problem with that is it does leave the door open for a lot of creepy, scary, and sometimes wonderful things to happen. So let's just get into this story and you guys let me know what you think. Cindy Loof was a 24 year old young lady, beautiful young lady, blonde hair, blue eyes. She lived in Lincoln, Nebraska. She lived all on her own and she worked at this store that was kind of like a Home Depot or a Lowe's or an Ace Hardware. Hardware. It was a hardware store. Well, she was sitting at home one night. She was just on Tinder, swiping left and swiping right, and she matched with this chick named Bailey. Bailey was 23 years old, dark brown hair, beautiful young lady, and they started chatting. The chemistry was flowing, and they decided that they were going to meet up and go out on a date. Sydney goes out on a date with Bailey, as far as we know. She has a good time. She comes back home, she's all excited. You know how you are when you like go out on a date with somebody and, and you feel like the good connection. They go ahead and decide that the next night they're gonna go on a second date. Well, Sydney gets up and goes to work the next day. She goes to work at her hardware store, she has a good day. She's probably thinking about Bailey, she's probably checking people out, saying good morning. You know how you are, you're on that cloud nine when you've just met somebody. She decides to go out on a second date that night. Bailey comes and picks her up. She goes off, she disappears, and nobody hears from her. The next day at her job, they start looking for her. She didn't show up. Sydney was supposed to go to work and this was not like Sydney. Sydney was a very responsible person. She was very close with her family. She was very close with her friends. She was always in contact with people and for her to just disappear, not answer phone calls, not answer, you know, her work calls was just not like her. So where was Sydney? One of Sydney's friends spoke up and said, "Hey, listen, Sydney sent me this picture of her going out on a date and this was her when she was ready to go for her date. So see, Sydney was really big into social media. She used Snapchat, she used Facebook. So luckily she sent her friend this picture. She also sent her friend a picture of Bailey, the girl that she went on the date with. And you know, if I had to imagine, I would assume it was like probably Sydney being excited and like, oh my gosh, look at this girl I'm going on a date with, look how beautiful she is. Or maybe she was like, hey, here's this picture of Bailey you know just in case something happens to me but I would assume it's the first one but I don't think we really know 
what the details on that was. So the friend who is obviously the MVP decides to make a Tinder account and she swipes and swipes and swipes until she matches with Bailey. She starts talking with Bailey, she gets her phone number from her and then she gives her phone number to the police department and the FBI and says, listen, this was the last known person and her phone number that Sydney was with. Contact Bailey. Before you know it, the family, everybody is looking for Sydney. The FBI is trying to get in contact with Bailey. There's news reportings. You know, the parents are making press appearances and telling them like, you know, anybody knows anything about my daughter, where is she? They went to her house. They went to Sydney's house and they found out that her vehicle was there, that her purse was there, and that her cat was left unfed. Yes, Sydney had a cat and it was not like her to just leave her cat with no food either. So everybody was super stumped. The next thing you know, the media starts putting out these pictures of Bailey and now her known boyfriend. So Bailey, the girl that Sydney matched with on Tinder, had a 51 year old boyfriend named Aubrey. Things started getting a little weird here. Now, when I say weird, that does not mean that an age gap is always, you know, alarming. You know, I know people that are in relationships with, with others that have a huge age gap and they are in love. They've been together for many, many years. You know, whatever floats your boat to each his own, whatever you like. But it was just so bizarre. Why would Bailey, who has a boyfriend, be matching with Sydney online and taking her out on a date? Is it possible? Do those types of things happen? Sure, every day. But it was just kind of starting to take a weird turn, like what is going on? The more that the investigators started looking into it, they decided to go to Sydney's job and look on the security cameras to see if they could see anything. The day that Sydney went missing, she went to work that day. Remember I told you that? They saw Aubrey, Bailey's boyfriend, going into her store and buying certain kind of items like a hacksaw and you know pliers and snipping shears and just different items. It was really just bizarre that he went into her work. As a matter of fact, on the camera, they have a scene where he walked in four minutes after Sydney walked in to go to work. So Sydney goes in to go to work and he comes in four minutes after her. And there's even a spot on the security camera where they pass each other and Aubrey looks at her and keeps going. So to me, that tells me that they did not know each other at that point, but that's my speculation. The next thing you know, all over the media, Bailey and Aubrey's faces are plastered as people of suspect. They were the only suspects that they had for Sydney's disappearance at this time. So Aubrey and Bailey started doing something which was also kind of bizarre. Supposedly they had warrants out for their arrest so they didn't want to actually go into the police department. So what they did was they filmed these really strange videos and in the videos where they posted on social media, Bailey, the 23 year old young lady, had on sunglasses and a hoodie and Aubrey was in the background and Aubrey talked for like eight minutes, basically calling the police department a liar and that they were in contact with the police department and they didn't have anything to do with her disappearance and saying that, you know, they were just given all these kind. it's just, it was strange, strange to say the least. Then Bailey gets on like the last minute, which her face was in the camera the whole entire time. And she says, Hi, good morning. I'm Bailey, Audrey on Tinder and a few other names because I have warrants, but this really isn't about me. This is about Sydney. And I'm just kind of want to tell you what I've already told the Lincoln police more than one time. I met her on a Tuesday, we drove around Lincoln, smoked weed, had a great time, we hit it off, I dropped her off at home, picked her up the next night at her house, we drove around, smoked weed again, made our way to my house where we smoked, I gave her a quarter ounce of some really good weed, uh, I went to take her home and she asked me to drop her off at a friend's house, so I did so. I gave her my number. We were planning to go to the casino that weekend. Um, I mean, I haven't heard from her since. I just, I really 
don't even know what else to say. I've been seeing all this stuff on the news presses and the magazines and the news and I just, I guess I just want the family to know that I'm truly sorry and I didn't have anything to do with this and I hope that Sydney is found very soon. She is a sweet, amazing girl. Um, I don't know. Babe, do you have anything else to say? I hope also that Sydney's found soon. We wish the family the best. We're sorry you're going through this. As far as all this stuff that the police department is putting in the papers, putting on the news, what they're feeding to the media, what they want the media to know, um, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing she can do about that because the police department is going to do what suits them best. Yeah, I know that's coming from a criminal, so you know, you'll believe what you will as far as the police department is concerned. But as far as I'm concerned, what they're chasing us around like dogs, I wish the family the best. I mean, no disrespect to anyone. I wish Sydney the best. But as far as the police department, fuck you. So you hear that. She basically said that she just hung out with her for two nights with her man and then they dropped her off at a friend's house. Now, I find that very strange. Why would he be in her job buying these certain kind of items? Why didn't they talk if they just hung out the day before? Why didn't they at least say, hey, I don't believe that that's the case, but we'll keep going here. 19 days after Sydney had disappeared, they started finding her body in pieces. Yes, in pieces. Her body was dismembered into 14 different pieces and they only found 13. They were scattered out in this field and in all different kinds of areas and the details of her body parts are just brutal. The left shoulder to the arm area was never recovered. Nobody still knows where that is. Something else strange happened. Aubrey and Bailey were now like kind of on the run, like they were disappearing, nobody knew where they were. Well, they lived in this like a basement apartment-ish kind of thing and the people around them, the neighbors, called the cops and said, listen, there is a strong bleach smell coming from their apartment. I mean, literally the other neighbors could smell the bleach. So the cops entered into Bailey and Aubrey's apartment and said that the bleach smell was overpowering, that they had even cleaned the walls. There was so much bleach. What were they trying to hide? What were they trying to clean up? The next thing you know, Bailey and Aubrey were arrested. They were arrested on murder charges. And then this is when the case started getting weird too. Aubrey, the 51 year old male, admitted to murdering Sydney. He said that they were in some sort of relations cult, you know what I mean? Like intimacy cult, cult? I don't even wanna say the word. And that he had something around her neck and they were in the deed and he accidentally strangled her and killed her. And when he did, they decided to dismember the body and get rid of it and that Bailey helped. But Bailey was not involved in the murdering of Sydney. Now, things started getting so much more strange. Aubrey basically made a whole skeptical or a circus of this trial. He did so many bizarre things, even down to saying like he was into witchcraft or he was a vampire or that, she, you know, Sydney knew what she was getting herself into and that he had all of these different relations slaves and that they had these big, I, just all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think what had to be the most bizarre thing that Aubrey did in trial in front of the judge was he found something sharp while he's sitting in there next to his lawyers in front of the judge and he slices his own neck three times and starts yelling, Bailey didn't have anything to do with this, curse you all. Like, the judge immediately says, stop filming, stop filming, and he's rushed to the hospital. And we don't know what he was trying to accomplish, but that was so strange. Like he sliced his own neck in the middle of the courtroom three times before they could get to him and stop him. 
Well, he went to the hospital and as he got better, he ended up having to come back to court and he stood trial. He was found guilty on all charges. Later, Bailey was found guilty as well. The sentencing panel for Aubrey is set for June of this year, 2020 and he is facing the death penalty or life in prison and we're still waiting for Bailey of when hers is going to be sentenced but it's like this is such a crazy bizarre case and there's just like so many more details that's like just gut-wrenching I personally think now this is just my personal opinion of what I think happened complete speculation I think they planned this from the beginning there is no other reason why Aubrey the 51 year old male should have been in her store buying these tools that you would use to saw or you know a person or, you know like it's not easy you don't just take a you know you oh I don't even want to talk about it but you guys get the point okay the day of her disappearance before they went on their second date what I personally think happened like I said just speculation I think that Sydney matched with Bailey and she was into her. And I think that Bailey and Sydney hung out the first day. I think that Aubrey was kind of behind it talking to Bailey the whole time. I think that they were planning on like, yeah, let's do this for whatever reasons, whatever sick reasons that they had. And that he started scoping her out. Cause you know, you think about it. She's probably, you know, Sydney's probably talking to Bailey and she's like, yeah, I work at this store. You know, cause that's what you ask when you talk to people, where do you work? What do you do for fun? These are your typical questions. And so I think whenever Sydney told Bailey where she worked, I think they started going into the store and scoping her out, especially him, because she didn't know about him yet. Sydney didn't know about Aubrey. She only knew about Bailey because that's who she was talking to. So I think Bailey picked her up the first night and they hung out. And I think that that's when Aubrey and Bailey decided, yes, we're going to do this. And he goes into the store the next day and to her store, he's checking her out, scoping her out in her store. And she had no idea buying these tools to do this. And then Aubrey goes and picks her up the next night, brings her to the house. And then that's where this happened and that's why they cleaned it up with bleach. And I really think they thought that they were going to get away with this. But, and they, they might have gotten away with it had Sin Sydney not shared the information with her friend or her cousins or whoever all she shared it with about who she was matched with on Tinder and who she was going on a date with. Nobody may have never knew. If she had kept it all to herself, nobody would have known where to look. But she did that. So with this story being said on Valentine's Day, and I know many of us are looking for love out there, please be careful on any kind of social media site or anywhere in the grocery store or anywhere that you're at. Even on Instagram and Instagram DMs, be very, very, very careful about what personal information you give to people. You never know what these people are plotting. And I think that Sydney probably felt safe because I hate to say it like this, guys, don't come for me, but she was talking to a woman. Us as women, we're almost trained to think that men are the only aggressors. And that's not true. Women can be just as aggressive and just as shysty and sneaky and harmful as a man. And so she thinks she's just going out with a girl, but she has no idea that there is a 51 year old man that's plotting and living with this chick and they've got other things going on. So please, for the love of God, my babies out there, especially everybody, everybody, but I'm really talking to my teenagers and my babies and you feel like you know somebody and you're talking to somebody like these kind of things happen. There are so many Tinder and plenty of fish and grinder horror stories that have been found and that have made the news like be careful, please. All right, my loves, what do you guys think? Have y'all heard of this? Like, is this wild? How do you feel? As always, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.